Etching is a fun way to make personalized gifts. And if you combine a glass etching cream like Armor Etch with the precision of a Cricut cutting machine, you can get really amazingly crisp and beautiful results. So over the years, I've shared six tutorials on how to etch glass. Everything from the basics of etching um, to how to specifically etch ornaments, cookie jars, glasses, and wine bottles. Collectively, our community has made tens of thousands of glass etching projects. It's one of our most popular projects, in fact. And so we've all learned many tips and tricks for getting our etched projects to turn out great from the start. So let's talk today about how to increase your chances of getting a beautiful etch when you use Armor Etch with a stencil like this. So first, let's talk about our materials that we need for etching and what's important to know about each one. So first, our etching cream. Let me show you. So etching cream matters. I use Armor Etch and only Armor Etch. Armor Etch is a brand of etching cream that is used to etch designs into glass and other surfaces. It's a thick cream that is applied to the surface where it reacts with the glass to create a permanent frosted effect. There are other etching creams out there. I've never tried them, but from what those that I've heard who have, um, they have mixed results. So I will always recommend what I know works and that is Armor Etch. It's beautiful. Look at these lovely consistent results all over this glass. All right. Next thing, shelf life. Armor Etch claims not to have an expiration date, but in our experience, the older it is, the thicker it gets, and the harder it is to get a smooth etch. So while there is no expiration date, sure, I think there's a shelf life to it. If it's more than a couple years old or it seems just really thick, you might want to get a new bottle. If you can't get a new bottle, store your bottle upside down for a while like this, okay, just like a few hours, and then shake it really, really, really well. Get it as mixed as possible. And I wanna show you what it should look like, okay? So you really wanna mix it up, it's very important. There's crystals in here that need to be uh, well distributed that to get a good etch. And this, by the way, there's a child safety cap on here, cause you know, this is what it looks should look like. Let's get that, uh, that focus, right? See that in there? See the consistency of it? All right, I'm gonna close that back up. <laughs> now, the temperature of your Armor Etch matters too. It needs to be at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit, um, your, your etching cream, as well as whatever you're etching, okay? At least 70 degrees. Something else is your surface matters. You should know that Armor Etch works on glass and a few other surfaces, like slate and some glazed ceramics but not on plastic. Most people use it to etch glass, but not all glass is going to be etchable with etching cream. Some people will tell you that Pyrex won't work, um, but I have successfully etched on Pyrex as well as some other brands. Um, now, some of those were new, some were old, so it's not the brand or age of the glass that matters, it's the glass composition. Not all glass compositions are the same, and thus they don't all react the same to etching cream. In my experience, the higher quality glass that is shatter resistant, those are the ones less likely to etch. So dishes made of borosilicate will not etch. Uh, borosilicate glass is a tougher glass. Um, and if you see a note that your dish is scratch or impact resistant to withstand rapid temperature changes, it's possible it might not work to etch correctly. But there's good news. You can test in advance if your glass will etch. You just put a really small amount of etching cream like on the bottom of a glass or if you're using a casserole dish, you know, just somewhere where you can't see it. You can use a small paintbrush or even a toothpick to do it. And you just put a little bit there, leave it for a few minutes and then wash it with cold water and dry it and examine it. If it etched well, then you're good to go. Um, if you can barely see it or you can't see it at all, your glass casserole dish or whatever you're using is not a good candidate for etching. All right, so uh, that's important, right? Always test before you go to all the effort of putting your stencil on and then do the whole shebang, right? Okay, now let's talk about vinyl. So our stencils are made out of vinyl. And I have some here. So here are a couple of stencils. We cut these on the Cricut, right? Um, and we used this vinyl right here, okay? so. Uh, your vinyl stencil is really 
makes a huge difference. <laughs> it gives you the crisp edges and everything, but the type of vinyl that you use matters. You want permanent vinyl that is not over its shelf life of a couple years. Do not use removable vinyl as it won't form a tight enough seal when you etch it. You can use any permanent vinyl except something like glitter or something weird that's not super old. Okay, so my recommendation is just to use scraps that you might already have, because usually etching is a nice small project, right? It's a great scrap buster project um, that isn't like ancient, like you don't know where it was from. <laughs> um, just make sure it's permanent, okay? It doesn't matter if it's glossy or not glossy. Most permanent vinyl is glossy though. Uh, what matters that is that it's permanent. You can use stencil vinyl, but in my experiments, it didn't make any difference whether it was stencil vinyl or permanent vinyl. Just don't use removable. It's just the adhesive is not as strong of a tack and so it won't lay on your surface as well and it will not give you a nice, it won't give you that nice crisp edge because some of it might lift up when you're brushing your stencil cream on, okay? So that's the, the vinyl that you wanna use. So don't, don't um, you know, don't use just mystery vinyl that you're not sure about. All right, so the next thing is brushes. I have two here. One is a good brush and one's a bad brush. <laughs> so your brush matters a lot too. You want to use a bristle brush with bristles. The bristles will help you get the armor etch into every nook and cranny of your design. And it also helps you get the cream moving more. Um, and that's one of the great important things to do for a good etch. What you don't want to use is this foam brush, okay? Oops. Um, don't use a foam brush. It can, it doesn't, um, it can get like little air bubbles in it that can cause issues, right? So just avoid these and go for these. You can use, if you have a nice delicate design, you can use a little one. If you have a bigger design, you can use a bigger brush. But what matters is that it's a bristle brush. Okay, so I have some more tips that I wanna share with you because there's, there's a fair, you know, for such a simple project, there's a lot of little things that can go wrong. So I wanna go over everything with you. Things that you might just not think about, right? That's what I notice happens. So first, be sure to shake your etching cream really, really well. This is so important. There's little crystals in the etching cream that are necessary to get a good etch. And you wanna be sure they're well distributed in your cream when you apply it. So shake it really, 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 really good, okay? Okay, the next tip is to clean your surface. Um, so let me, oh, yeah, here we go. So alcohol, make sure that cap is on. <laughs> and a coffee filter work great, but you can also use a lint-free cloth. Uh, this is like a microfiber cloth, so no lint, no little fibers are gonna come off. Um, but honestly, this, these coffee filters work really well. So whenever you're doing any etching, it's so important. It's the fact, this is probably one of my best tips for glass etching is to make sure that your glass surface is super clean and free of any dirt or oil before you apply the etching cream. Anything at all on the surface of the glass can prevent the etching cream from reacting properly with it, and that can result in a poor quality etch. So to clean the glass, just use some rubbing alcohol and something like a coffee filter, and just be very diligent about getting the surface clean. And then I also recommend you wear gloves so you don't put more fingerprints onto your glass. So I would like to wear nitro gloves when I'm doing working with this. So get that clean. Now don't use any um, like glass cleaner, nothing like that. Um, glass cleaner, especially like that streak free stuff, it can lead, leave uh, other chemicals on there that can get in the way of your etch. Okay, so just alcohol and um, and lint-free cloth so you don't like transfer little bits of stuff to it and then wear gloves so that you don't just go and make it dirty again, okay? All right, something else that's really important is the, the, the edges of your vinyl. Now, this is a curved surface, so it's a little tricky. Um, I will show you how to do this tonight in our tutorial, but I'll also do it right now. If you cut and I'm gonna cut right into my stencil right now because we can always use our masking tape, right? If you cut little cuts around it like this, it's gonna be easier to apply it to the curved surface. If you're working with something flat, you don't have to worry about this. This is just for curved surfaces, but it'll allow it to move around the surface better. 
Okay, so glass is clean. So we're gonna put this onto our glass like this, nice and carefully. We always smooth from the center outward, right? Because what's so important is that the edges of our vinyl are really tight to the glass, right? And then smooth everything else down. So I always focus on the design itself, right? First, and then I smooth the rest of it around. Because if there's any wrinkles or whatever in the, the big parts of the vinyl, not at the edges, I can always put some tape there. But we don't want any wrinkles at the edges. Okay, so smooth down really well. Use your scraper too to really get those edges super flat against it. And then I'm gonna take off the tape and it's gonna come off in little bits. This is pretty normal for when you cut it like this. There we go. <laughs> Lots of little pieces, but this is gonna, that really makes a difference in how you get your, your, um, your vinyl on there. And one more, I think we'll do it. Okay. Now it is on there really good, but still I always go over it with my gloved finger over all the edges, right? I always do that uh, for uh, any edge, right? Because it's just so important that those edges be really tight to your glass. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. There we go. So you'll see there's wrinkles around there. Um, but it's in the vinyl, it's not in the edge of the butterfly, okay? So go over those edges super carefully. You wear gloves and double check that everything is really well sealed to your glass. If you're having an issue, you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer on low heat to get rid of the bubbles and make sure it's really well stuck to your glass, okay? So that's what you're looking for, even if this part is kind of messy, okay? The next tip is to make sure that you put masking tape or painter's tape on any part of the glass that you don't want to etch, okay? So this is just pink mask masking tape, or this is painter's tape, sorry. Uh, you can also, you, can, you know, masking tape, the blue painter's tape is fine, right? So I, I know this is, while it's covering quite a bit, I would want to tape more, right? Tape any part that you're worried feel free to tape the whole thing if you want, right? You don't want a little bit of uh, stuff somewhere else. Make sure all of those edges are really well down as well. Um, and then you'll also wanna know in advance how you're gonna hold your item while you etch it so you can prepare and stay away from the stray cream, okay? So if, if you're gonna etch just this butterfly on here, you can just hold like this one by the stem. If, however, you were going to do this one here where we etch the entire thing, you would want to like, okay, so you can start by holding at the stem, but eventually we put etching cream on the stem too. So then you need a plan, right? So just know how you're going to hold it so that you can get all of your etching on there, right? So you see how we've etched the whole thing on this one. So just always know what you're going to do so that you're not scrambling. Okay. My next tip is to be sure to use enough. Apply a thick layer, thick enough that you can't see the design of the stencil super clear, right? So it's, a, you know, there's enough on there. You could always put any extra cream back into the bottle to reuse again later. Just don't use so much that it's a goopy mess and it's running all over the place, of course. That can certainly cause issues with your etch too. But enough that it is, it's not just a teeny tiny bit, there's enough on there. All right, and my next tip is about brushing. So let's get this out. We're gonna pretend that I have um, some armor etch on here. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see better. There we go. All right, so here it is. <clears throat> and you, by the way, tips for keeping your uh, project stable. You can use a scraper tool right here and it'll stay in place. You could also use something like a lint roller right up against it, sticky, and it'll keep it in place too. All right, so um, paintbrush. Remember, we want to use a paintbrush, um, and so you would just dip it in there. You don't have to put it in any separate container. But when you uh, brush, you want to brush side, and then up and down, and then diagonally. 
right? You need that cream to go everywhere. I also recommend you keep it moving so the little crystals in the cream can do their job. Uh, you really need to keep it moving when you first apply it, in fact, to get the best and most consistent etch. So you're doing it like this. What you're not doing is scrubbing like this. If you do this, the bristles of your brush can get underneath the edge of your vinyl. Even though you've been super careful about it, it's more like brushing. And I like to brush the edges of the, so you see how I'm not really going all the way across. I'm really just brushing uh, across the edge, right? And then like this. So just, you know, you can also pat it on, but I, I think that I get the best results doing it like this, okay? All right, so that's how I brush and I think that works really well. All right, the next thing is time. And I, this is why I was late today because I was doing a little experiment for everybody. So I have to get this out to show you. All right. <laughs> Um, all right, so the time, the amount of time that you keep the etching cream on matters. If it's too little and you don't get a strong enough etch, um, it it'll just won't look good. If it's too long, it can weaken the bond of your vinyl and cause issues. So Armor Etches instructions actually say, right here on the back, they say to leave it on for one minute and no longer. But I have found that the etching cream needs to stay on each area of the glass for at least three minutes. Um, for small designs and at least five minutes for larger designs. You can leave it on longer, but 20 minutes is really the maximum to avoid messing with your vinyl stencil. If you keep it on too long, you can scorch your glass or get a blurry design um, because your vinyl became weakened. So let me show you my experiment today. I, oops, there we go, you can see it. I did some experimenting. I want you to see what I did. I have all, I wrote down notes on everything so you could see what worked and what didn't. You want, want you to see the huge variety. These are all the same design, all the same ar bottle of Armor Etch. Look at this huge uh, difference here, okay? So I've got my notes here so I can explain this to you. I could try even putting the notes right on here. I was gonna try that. Let's see if my Sharpie is uh, gonna work. Let's see here. I know you can't see it now. Maybe if I angle it a little bit more, because I can barely see it here. Will this work? Okay, so three, this is the amount of time that I spent. Okay, there. So, <laughs> uh, the top, so they're in columns. This column right here, angle this up so you can see it again. There we go. Over here, this first column right here, this is one minute. I want you to notice how none of these are good enough at one minute. Now the top row is doing it properly, lots of cream, lots of movement, all that good stuff, right? Everything I just told you. The second row is where we don't use enough cream, right? It's so just a little bit. The third row is uh, a dirty glass, fingerprints, stuff like that. And the fourth row is where I didn't do a good job of putting my vinyl down, okay? So this whole one minute row right here did not work out. Now, here is three, five, 10, 15, and 30. They all look really amazing. Five through 30 are the best. Okay, so I didn't have any issues. Let me hold that up a little bit more so you can see. I have to get my hand in there so it focuses for us. I have to lower it a little bit, might be too close. There, I think that's focused, there we go. So here, there is 30, 15, 10, five, and three. Three just isn't enough, but five through 30 look good. I don't see any issues with the vinyl not adhering well, but you'll, I want you to see how you really don't need that extra time, okay? Then the second row, again, is not enough, not enough etching cream. You can see what a huge difference this makes. As we go further down in more time, we're certainly getting a better etch. In the beginning, it's just pretty bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we, you need to be using enough so that it's really making a difference and really etching the glass. Our third row right here is um, a dirty glass, right? I want you to see that nearly every single one of these failed except maybe this one that I probably just got lucky because you can always just get lucky. And then our bottom row is a, where I wasn't careful about making sure that the vinyl edges were really tight to the glass. So right here, uh, this is you know by time again, so one through 30. Um, you can see while this didn't etch well, it's also a mess. It's some seeped under this edge. All of them, all of them look bad. <laughs> so hopefully this is uh, useful to you. I would love to have a better image of this, um, but you know, this is a tough one because the best, the best that we're gonna get is shining in a light like this. I will attempt to get a better image of this and add it somewhere so we can see. But this, I think it should illustrate to you how um, you don't really need to have that extra time in most cases. It's okay to go a little longer, but you just don't leave it on there like several hours. It will mess with your vinyl, okay? <laughs> but you really don't need to either. Like five minutes when you're moving it back and forth, up and down, diagonally, your glass is clean, works just fine. See, they look great, okay. Um, so hopefully you find that interesting and because um, I think it's interesting to see and I didn't even know how it would look until we took it off you know it's not like a, in fact that like Greg was like I was late today to the party because I was literally still doing like this one and three minute ones <laughs> and so Greg I said like oh, go rinse it off just give it to me I don't know if it'll work I guess we're gonna find out and he handed it to me and it's like is this what you wanted and I'm like that's exactly it it totally worked the way I expected it to Yay. <laughs> um, in fact, talking about rinsing. Okay, so when you go to rinse, you wanna scrape off all the excess cream before you rinse it to avoid it getting in places that you don't want it to be. To be. Um, and be sure to use cold running water. If you use super hot water, it might actually hurt your vinyl as you're removing it, and that could cause a blurry design. Keep your water at a low pressure. Don't like super spray it off with your like kitchen sprayer because that could cause the, scream, the cream to like splatter and go everywhere, including on your glass. And uh, be careful about where your runoff is going. If it's going, let's say you're doing this one and you're, um, it could go on other parts of your glass. So if you turn it upside down, right, it'll just go right off, right? So presumably you've protected this part. You definitely wouldn't want it to go, the water to go in like this and get inside your glass because then if you forget to get any of that etching cream out um, and it just kind of dries there, it could actually etch, you know, your glass. It might not be a big deal. <laughs> you might barely notice it. It'll be filled with wine or whatever, right, anyways. But, you know, just, just I'm trying to cover all the bases. And also something really important that I want everyone to know is that I consider etching to be more of an art than an exact science, and it does take some practice. I recommend you find some glass to practice on, something like I did. This was an old picture frame glass that we had here at the studio, and you can just use it for testing and playing around and finding what works best for you. Um, another tip is that if you notice that some of your glass isn't fully etched, you can try another round of etching to cover up those little parts. Let me give you an example because I have one right here. I had to do a quick uh, one just for a video where I was just showing it being rinsed off here at the studio. So I was not being as careful as I should, mostly because it was just like to make a video with, right? Uh, so let me show you. Uh, so it's this, it's Greg's one right here. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> um, I want you to see the back here. You see the bottom here? Um, I did not get enough etching cream on the bottom right here. You see how you can see the so up here, it's all nicely frosted. You can see here, I messed up down here. I didn't, but the cool thing is that I could tape the design. So I'd want to tape this part here, the part where we don't want any etching cream and down here too where the snowflakes are because all that worked out great. And then I can just re-etch the back so that it can be nice. It may not be as consistent, right, as, as if I did it properly the first time, but it won't look like this shiny bit here either, right? So that instead, you get it to look like this and it's all nice and consistent. This is the way it should be. So in my left hand, 
we have the good way see how it's very consistently etched lovely right and then in my right hand we have the one where i was careless and like oh let's just hurry and get this done <laughs> basically anytime you hurry that's when you have problems that's what i found okay um all right and then let's see here um um, I recommend that if you're going to like redo a section, five minutes is going to be good enough, right? Then rinse it and be sure to rinse it just like before. Um, just keep in mind that this trick works best in areas like um, here, right? So I'm away from the design and so I can just put it here. All right. Who has questions for me about glass etching? I would love to answer. I may not know the answer. Maybe someone here does though. I know we have lots of people who do etching and um, I, I do not pretend to be the expert in all things glass etching, but at this point, you know, we've done quite a few tutorials together. We've learned a lot and I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Sandy says, how can you be sure the placement is correct before you apply the stencil cream? So we actually have an awesome tip that we're gonna show you in tonight's tutorial on how to make sure that your stencil is being applied straight. And we're demonstrating on a wine bottle, right? Cause it matters for that. Cause if it's crooked, you'll really see it. Um, these ones here, we actually designed them so they don't have to be super straight and they'll still look amazing. <laughs> um, but still we have a tip and it involves a dry erase marker. So, and a ruler. Uh, so you can just measure and mark it and then wipe it off. So um, that's the, my best way, you know, but measuring is the best way to get something straight, honestly, but you can mark it. Um, and we also will be using some painter's tape too. So we actually have a couple techniques to make sure you're getting it in the right location because there's something else that you should be aware of. So a lot of glass, like our, our wine glasses, they're they're beautiful you know there's no seams but some things have seams or like raised lettering so the bottom of a casserole dish often has like raised letterings that say you know the brand name and stuff so if you're etching on the bottom which is where i recommend that you etch on a casserole dish you'll want to avoid those because it'll make it difficult to etch they won't etch as well it'll be kind of bumpy and then on the wine bottles i'm gonna blank one here we go let me show you here so here's our wine bottle. They have a seam in them. See that seam right there, right? So when you make it, you'll want this seam to be in the back. So you'll actually mark that off. That kind of, actually, that looks like a seam too. So you want them to be on the sides. There we go, right? So check your bottles, check your surfaces for anything like that because you know sticking it right in the middle isn't gonna look so great. But you know, have, so just have it on the sides instead. Uh, I see some more questions. Nikki says, do you have to keep it moving? Do you have to keep moving your brush around for five minutes? That's what I find um, gives the best results, right? So you want to put a, a bunch on there and then keep it moving. That is the most, that's the best etching, the most consistent results. And that is indeed how I did it in our test. If I hold this up, can you kind of see it? You can, you can kind of see it here. Anyway, so this top row right here, this is all done with um, constant movement. I mean, after five minutes, I, I would let it go and move on because there were a lot of butterflies here, but I would go back and I would keep moving it, right? I would just like return to it over, you know? So look, when you're doing a big project like a wine bottle, you can't keep moving over the entire surface the whole time, right? But you can do it in the beginning and then you can come back as you're working the rest of the bottle. Uh, Debbie says, should the brush be a little stiff or does it matter? Um, that's a great question. I don't know if it matters. My brushes are, they're, they're not super floppy. I feel like uh, it would, it's, I'm not sure if it matters actually. If it's crazy stiff, it could actually work itself under the vinyl. Like if you pushed up against it, if it's really soft, like it might not do a great job of moving it around. So average, <laughs> um, I've always just used brushes like this. I'm uh, not like one that's like super soft. So, and the, these brushes are in my material list for the project. Um, I, they're just standard paint brushes. There's nothing special about them. They're just inexpensive paint brushes. Karen says, is it necessary to use 91% alcohol to clean your glass surfaces? It doesn't matter 
that it's specifically 91%. If you find some that's 90 or 95, that's totally fine. Um, but you don't want it mixed with anything else, right? You don't want some kind of like um, solution of alcohol in something else because that something else could be an issue. And um, I don't think that there's, I've never seen 100% isopropyl alcohol. I'm sure it exists, but I've never bought it. So somewhere in the 90s is good enough. I'm sure even like in the 80s, but I usually get it in the 90s. Cindy says, can you reuse the stencil or do you have to get a new one each time? If you're cutting a, a vinyl like we are, it's not going to be reusable. When you take it off, it'll be, it'll like stretch and it might even come off in pieces. <laughs> so you're not going to want to uh, you're not going to be able to reuse the stencil there. You know, I, I think that there are might might be some reusable stencils out there made of something else, but we've never made those. So I feel like I've seen them around, but, um, I don't really, the, the, honestly, I don't know how well they would really stick to the glass either. Like our stencils give super clear, very clear, crisp edges. Anything that's reusable, you know, it might not be able to get really stuck to the glass because when you go to remove it, it might tear or something. So I'm not sure. That's a good question. It deserves more research. Uh, Valerie says, how large are the wine glass designs? They are this size. <laughs> so it looks like they are three and a half inches tall or three inches. I'd say three inches tall. I'm looking at the grid in the back by... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they wrap around the whole glass and you can use the extra snowflakes at the base. Like what we did is, um, let me show you. So um, all of the designs that we have for this project come with extra stencils. So you can put them like at the necks of the bottle or at the bases of the glass. Um, so you can see here that we've got snowflakes all around here right? And then um, there's snowflakes on the base here too. So, but you can do whatever you want, of course, whatever you want, but that's the size of this stencil. Sandy says, how do you know you have the stencil placed correctly? I think, did I answer that one? It sounds familiar. Um, if you're talking about straightness, um, we have our tip in our tutorial tonight. You just use a ruler and a dry erase marker and you can mat, you can, you can write right on there and make sure you get it straight. If you're concerned about your edges not being um, pressed down well enough, just go over all of your edges with a gloved hand so that you know that every edge of your vinyl is really, really tight to the glass and it's not going to pull up or anything like that with your brush, right? You can, of course, some people worry that, oh, why would I use permanent, glass, permanent vinyl? I'm gonna remove it. Um, it's really easy to remove with a weeding tool later on when you're, after you rinse it, there's no, there's no issues with removing it. It's not really permanent on glass ever. You can always get vinyl off glass. Uh, Fatima, Fatima says, rather than the etching cream, is it possible to get the same effect with the frosted glass spray paint that like you used earlier in the week? Yes, you can. Um, it just... Uh, I wouldn't drink out of it, so I wouldn't put my mouth up to that frosted stuff that, you know, the, I used the frosted glass in my snowman from last year's Merrymaker Mingle. Um, so you definitely could. It would look similar. Um, it would look similar, but, um, and with something like this, it would be easier to do where you were doing the whole glass. Um, if you were doing just, you know, the more traditional etching where you have just a part that's etched instead of the whole glass, um, it might be a little trickier to do because you have to get the whole thing. And I will tell you, it's a little, I found it challenging to get an even coat of that frosting um, spray stuff. Um, but you wouldn't want to drink it. Like I wouldn't want to be drinking that. I wouldn't want to touch that stuff, right? So if it's just decorative, yes, you could do that. But I think it might, it might scratch off, right? So it wouldn't be permanent like the, the etching is. It would be something to look at, not something to use for food or drink, you know, drink or anything like that. All right. I think I got everyone's questions. Was that useful? <laughs> I'm sure that there's something I missed. Um, if there's, you have any other questions, 
uh, please come on over to our crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We would be happy to help. We have tons of people who are making stencils and etching all the time. I see projects in there every day of people who are etching. So lots of collective experience to help you get a successful project.